the uh, specific power of the spark ignition IC engine that we discussed in the uh, previous two lectures is um, not uh, very high. <coughs> we can actually see that uh, in this uh, diagram. Uh, so, you can see that the specific power which is nothing but W net over m c v t 1 that is the dimensional specific power you can see is, um, uh, is in the lower side of this curve. So, this is the, the compression ignition diesel engine that we are going to discuss next, but you can see that this value is not high because the value can be increased by increasing T 3 over T 1, but uh, T 3 over T 1 equal to 7 is usually about the, uh, the maximum value that we are uh, generally uh, using in practical applications. It cannot be increased uh, much beyond that. So, there is no scope for doing that. Uh, and as you can see from this diagram, it is not uh, sensitive to uh, compression ratio also for a given T 3 over T 1 as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> the, um, uh, the specific power asymptotes beyond a compression ratio of about 4 or 5. Of course, one strategy uh, that we can think of is to add more cylinders. So, if the specific power from one cylinder is less, of course, more cylinders may be added. The uh, disadvantage with this strategy, this is uh, used in many practical applications, but the disadvantage with this strategy is that the power to weight ratio of the engine <coughs> deteriorates. So, as you add more cylinders, you are adding more weight. So, the power developed per unit weight of the engine <coughs> deteriorates as you add more cylinders, but this can be practiced up to a point we can uh, increase the number of cylinders, but the fundamental limitation that the specific power output from, uh, from a spark ignited internal combustion engine is small that still remains. Okay? Now, to uh, address this, uh, <coughs> the compression ignition engine was developed. Okay? Basically, the compression ignition engine uses a heavier fuel like diesel in contrast to the spark ignition engine which uses a lighter fuel like petrol or gasoline. Um, the compression ignition engine uses higher compression ratios and the uh, temperatures, the maximum temperature seen in the engine may be of the same order as the spark ignition engine, but because of the higher compression ratios and the way the compression is achieved, the uh, specific power produced by the uh, compression ignition engines are higher. Okay? Now, on the, uh, well, in addition, compression ignition engines also generally offer higher uh, thermal efficiency when compared to spark ignition engines. Okay? You must bear in mind that in the case of the spark ignition engine, we are limited to compression ratios below 10. Okay? So, that means we are also limited in the compression in the, uh, uh, in the thermal efficiency that we can realize. Whereas, in the case of a compression ignition engines, the compression ratios are much higher and they generally exhibit higher uh, thermal efficiency. So, this was also clear from the previous diagram. So, uh, in the spark ignition engine, we are limited to uh, compression ratios less than 10 in order to avoid the knocking phenomenon. Whereas, in the case of a compression ignition, ignition engine, the uh, pressure ratio, I am sorry, the compression ratios can be higher. So, consequently, these engines also have higher uh, thermal efficiency. So, these are the advantages of the uh, compression ignition engine, uh, higher specific power and higher thermal efficiency. On the uh, downside, however, is the fact that because uh, compression ignition engines use a heavier fuel like uh, diesel, the uh, emissions from the engine also uh, worsen. For instance, uh, compression ignition engines tend to put out pollutants like unburnt hydrocarbons and soot, which are typically not present in the case of a spark ignited IC engine because it uses a lighter fuel like gasoline. So, there is an additional disadvantage that comes from using compression ignition engine, which itself comes from the fact that it uses a heavier fuel like diesel. Okay. Of course, these sorts of uh, issues will be discussed in great detail in a course on uh, internal combustion engines. So, we must confine our uh, attention to the uh, air standard cycles, efficiencies and so on. We will not pay too much attention to these complications, but we will, uh, but I will mention them wherever uh, it is required so that we, uh, so that you have a perspective on the uh, effect 
that the parameters have on the overall performance of the engine and other attributes of the engine. Okay. So, in the case of the compression ignition engine, air is taken into the engine in the intake stroke in contrast to the SI engine where air and fuel mixture is taken into the engine here air is taken into the engine. The air is then compressed to compression ratios uh, higher than 15 typically uh, 20 or so. Okay. Because we are taking in only air, the uh, danger of knocking does not arise in this case. So, the air can be compressed to much higher compression ratios and also much higher temperatures at the uh, end of the compression stroke. Okay. So, generally the temperature at the end of the compression stroke is actually higher than um, uh, what we saw in the case of an SI engine. Remember SI engine, we said that we cannot go much above uh, T3 over T1 of 7. <coughs> Whereas, in the case of uh, uh, compression ignition engine, we can go above that and uh, we do go above, above that. In fact, this temperature is higher than the auto ignition temperature of the diesel fuel. But since air alone is compressed, there is no danger of knocking in the case of the CI engine. So, at the end of the compression stroke, fuel is sprayed into the cylinder. Okay. So, there is a fuel injector which sprays the fuel into the uh, cylinder at the end of the compression stroke because the air is already at a temperature higher than the auto ignition temperature of the fuel. A separate ignition mechanism such as a spark plug is not required in the case of a CI engine. Okay. The sprayed fuel evaporates, mixes with the air and begins to burn. Okay. Now, in the case of uh, the uh, compression ignition engine, the heat release is much more gradual. In the in in fact, the heat release is such that the pressure remains more or less constant as the temperature maximum temperature increases as the fuel undergoes combustion. Okay, so here we can actually treat the heat release as a, as a constant pressure process in contrast to the SI engine where it was actually uh, treated as a constant volume process. So uh, during the power stroke or at the end of the compression process. So, remember uh, this is a situation where the piston is still moving down. So, the in the uh, intake stroke, the piston moves from BDC to uh, TDC or top dead center. I am sorry, in the, in the case of the intake, the piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center. And in the case of the compression stroke, it goes from bottom dead center to top dead center. And combustion now in the uh, in the case of the CI engine is part of the power stroke, is part of the downward motion of the piston. Okay. So, here the piston actually starts moving from the uh, uh, top dead center to bottom dead center. Whereas, in the case of the SI engine, the combustion actually was a constant pressure, uh, constant volume process. So, it uh, took place instantaneously without any movement of the piston because it was constant volume. Okay. So, whereas here because it is a constant pressure process, piston begins to move down and a combustion process also accompanies the downward motion of the piston. So, for part of the downward motion of the piston, heat release occurs and for the rest of the downward motion of the piston, we have power stroke. Okay. And the fuel supply is cut off at some point. Okay. So, at um, after a certain amount of fuel is sprayed, the fuel supply is cut off. So, from this point onwards, there is no fuel and the fuel that is already in the cylinder uh, continues to burn, expand and push the uh, piston down and produces work. Okay. So, there is a cutoff point at which during the downward movement of the piston at which the uh, fuel supply is cut off. So, in the exhaust stroke, the uh, piston moves from bottom dead center to top dead center uh, and pushes the combustion gases out and the cylinder is then ready to receive a fresh charge of air. So, the main difference, um, of course, there are several differences, but probably one of the most important difference is the fact that combustion takes place at constant pressure. The other important difference is that the compression ratio is much higher than what we uh, normally uh, see in the case of an SI engine. So, the PV diagram of an air standard diesel cycle uh, may be depicted like this. Okay. So, here a certain amount of air is uh, present. Remember, this is an air standard cycle. 
So, this works with a fixed mass of air in the cylinder. So, a certain mass of air is present in the cylinder at state 1, which is then compressed from 1 to 2, from bottom dead center to top dead center. Okay. Of course, uh, as we did before, this uh, ratio uh, V1 over V2 is called the compression ratio denoted R like what we did for the SI engine, it remains the same. Okay. Then uh, fuel is uh, sprayed uh, or in the case of the air standard cycle, heat is added uh, while uh, maintaining the pressure constant. So, from 2 to 3, we have heat addition. So, this is of course compression. So, this is uh, constant pressure heat addition. Now, the heat addition is stopped uh, once we reach uh, a certain value for the specific volume or once we reach a certain cutoff value for the volume. So, V3 over V2 is called the cutoff ratio and denoted RC. Now, from state 3 to state 4, we have expansion process where the combustion gases expand and produce work. Notice that the work is non-zero uh, during 2-3 also because the piston is moved down, pushed down. There is displacement work during 2-3 also in this case. It is not a constant volume process, it is a constant uh, pressure process. 4 to 1, as before, heat rejection process takes place at constant volume. Notice that the number of stroke in the case of air standard diesel cycle is still 2, just like what we had for the air standard uh, auto cycle. So, this is one stroke from bottom dead center to top dead center and then this is another stroke from top dead center to bottom dead center. Because this takes place at constant volume, there is no movement of the piston. Okay? Now, the actual uh, compression ignition engine that uses the diesel fuel as I mentioned earlier utilizes 4 strokes whereas the air standard diesel cycle utilizes only 2 strokes. Now, first law applied to process 1, 2 which is a compression process gives us this. Here, we have assumed the process to be isentropic in the ideal case. Of course, isentropic efficiency can be uh, added to the analysis. So, there is no loss of generality uh, in assuming the process to be isentropic. So, we take Q to be 0. So, this is uh, the work that is uh, put into the uh, engine during uh, process 1, 2. 2-3 is constant pressure heat addition process. Again, application of first law uh, gives us this. Notice that this is the uh, displacement work which is non-zero and during the constant pressure heat addition process. So, 3-4 again is isentropic expansion process and 4-1 is constant volume heat rejection process. So, this is isentropic and this is of course constant volume. So, net uh, work output during uh, each cycle is work uh, that is uh, produced positive work minus the uh, work that is put into the uh, cycle. So, here we have expansion work which is this term here and we also have displacement work during the constant pressure heat addition process which is this term here. So, the thermal efficiency of the cycle is nothing but W net divided by Q n and this may be written like this. And so, if we combine, so if we rewrite this, we may actually uh, combine uh, this term with the, this term. Okay? So, these two may be combined and so since h is equal to u plus pv, we may write this as h3. Similarly, we may combine this term with this term and write it as h2. So, we end up with an expression like this for the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Now, suppose we assume the working substance which remember in the case of an air standard cycle working substance is air. Suppose we assume it to be calorically perfect. So, that u is equal to Cv times T 
and h is equal to C p times d. Then the expression for net work may be simplified like this. Okay. Notice that we have non-dimensionalized the network in the same manner as uh, was done for the SI engine. We have non-dimensionalized using MCV T1 so that a uh, fair comparison between the uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle is possible. That is why we have done it like this. So, work is non-dimensionalized with MCV T1. Okay. And the thermal efficiency of the cycle may be written like this. So, here as I mentioned before the compression ratio R is equal to V1 over V2 and the cutoff ratio RC is V3 over V2. So, this shows that the performance metrics of the cycle namely uh, W net eta and we will also develop an expression for the second law efficiency. So, the performance metrics these are the three performance metrics. So, these are controlled by the parameters RC and R. So, these two parameters control the performance of the cycle. In the case of the uh, auto cycle, uh, the compression ratio and T3 over T1 were the two parameters which control the performance of the cycle. In this case, we have RC and R. Remember, RC is the cutoff ratio. So, it indirectly controls the peak temperature because RC controls the amount of heat that is added. It indirectly controls the peak temperature in the cycle. So, in that sense, um, it is similar to the auto cycle. So, let us see how the two performance metrics vary with the uh, with different values for these parameters. The specific uh, work output of the diesel engine, I am sorry, uh, the uh, uh, air standard uh, diesel cycle is certainly uh, higher than what we saw for the auto cycle. Okay. Even for RC equal to 2, you can see that you know the uh, for a compression ratio of 20, the specific power uh, of, uh, uh, of a, a diesel cycle is comparable to the specific uh, work output of uh, an auto cycle for the highest value of uh, T3 over T1. Okay. And as we increase R3, the specific work output increases. And notice that the specific uh, uh, work output of the uh, air standard diesel cycle also increases with compression ratio. So, as we increase the compression ratio, the specific uh, work output increases in contrast to the auto cycle where the uh, specific power uh, no longer varies with the compression ratio for values of compression ratio beyond 5. Whereas, here it continues to increase almost linearly with the compression ratio for a given value of RC. So, uh, you may recall that this was one of the uh, objectives that we started out with that we wanted higher specific power from the uh, from the engine higher than what we had for the uh, auto cycle. So, since the specific power output is higher the diesel engine is diesel engine or compression ignition engine is used typically for heavy duty applications whereas, the spark ignition uh, IC engine is typically used for uh, light duty uh, vehicles or light duty applications. All heavy duty applications use the uh, compression ignition diesel engine extensively. Now, if you look at efficiency, we can see that uh, for typical uh, compression ratio of uh, 20 or so, you can see that the um, uh, efficiency of the air standard diesel cycle is already higher than the highest value that we saw for the uh, for the auto cycle for an RC of 2. However, as RC increases, you can see that the uh, efficiency comes down for a given compression ratio as RC increases, the efficiency of the cycle comes down. Okay. So, so the specific power goes up with RC whereas, the efficiency comes down with RC. So, you can see that the uh, uh, requirements are conflicting. We would like to have a uh, high value for specific power and a high value for efficiency. Okay. But fortunately, um, the variation of efficiency with the compression ratio is relatively mild. 
Okay. And also the drop in the value for efficiency um, with RC uh, does not appear to be um, uh, very large. So, with uh, reasonable values of, uh, uh, of compression ratios, we should be able to get good thermal efficiency in the uh, air standard diesel cycle also. Now, let us go and take a look at uh, the uh, second law efficiency for the air standard diesel cycle. Now, before we do that, uh, let us uh, take note of the following points. The thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle at r equal to 20, which is a typical value for production diesel engines is almost the same as the highest value possible for auto cycle corresponding to about r equal to 10 or 9 or so. Okay. Another uh, interesting thing is that the expression for the efficiency of the cold air standard diesel cycle becomes identical to its counterpart for auto cycle as RC goes to 1. So, here as you can see, uh, if you look at this expression as you let RC go to 1, if you use uh, uh, L'Hopital's rule, you will notice that as uh, RC goes to 1, this uh, efficiency tends to 1 minus one minus 1 over r raised to gamma minus 1, which is identical to the expression that we had for the auto cycle. So, it is somewhat uh, erroneously said that as RC goes to 1, the diesel cycle approaches the auto cycle. It is uh, erroneously mentioned in many places. So, you need to be careful about that because if you look at this illustration, it becomes clear that this is erroneous. As RC goes to 1, remember RC is V3 over V2. So, as RC goes to 1, so as RC goes to 1, you can see that 0.3 moves towards 0.2 and when RC becomes identically equal to 1, 0.3 sits right over 0.2 which means that the cycle actually looks like this. So, we start from 1, the air is compressed to 2 and then there is no heat addition. So, the air expands again from, uh, from 3 to 4 along the, along the same, uh, same path. So, the air expands from 3 to 1 along the same path. So, which means that it is actually a motoring cycle. The air is alternately compressed and expanded with uh, zero work output. So, although the expression is identical to that of uh, the auto cycle, the cycle is not. Because if you look at the expression for uh, W net, if you set RC equal to 1 in the expression for W net, you set RC equal to 1 in the expression for W net, you can see that this term goes to 0 and this also goes to 0. So, the power, the work output from the engine goes to 0. So, it becomes a motoring cycle. There is no net work output from the cycle. Okay? So, that is uh, very important. So, QH goes to 0 as RC goes to 1 and so, the cycle becomes a motoring cycle. Okay? So, the expression between the air, uh, cold air standard diesel cycle and the auto cycle are identical, but that is only coincidental because other things are different. Now, the exergy that is uh, supplied during the cycle is the um, uh, work that is uh, put into the engine. So, that is the first part. So, let us see. So, this is the work that is put inside in the, in the cycle during the compression stroke and this is the heat supplied. So, this is the exergy that is uh, supplied during the cycle. And for a um, uh, cold uh, air standard analysis, this may be simplified to read like this finally. Notice, notice that we have non-dimensionalized the exergy supplied as well in the same manner as we did for the specific uh, work output. Okay. Now, the uh, exergy that is recovered from the cycle is the work that is done during the power stroke plus the displacement work during heat addition process.
and this for a cold air standard analysis this expression may be simplified to read like this. And the second law of efficiency of course is exergy recovered divided by exergy supplied. And if we look at the uh, variation of uh, the second law efficiency um, with the parameters in the cycle it uh, looks like this. Again it is uh, the second law efficiency is plotted on the same graph for both the uh, cycles to uh, enable a fair comparison. So, you can see that the uh, second law efficiency is fairly insensitive to the uh, compression ratio, fairly insensitive for, for RC equal to 2, it is almost insensitive for RC equal to 4, it is mildly <coughs> sensitive to compression ratio. And more importantly, and the second law efficiency decreases with uh, increasing RC or with increasing peak temperature in the cycle just like what we saw for auto cycle. With increasing peak temperature the second law efficiency comes down for both auto and diesel cycles and as I mentioned before this is due to the fact that as the temperature of the uh, height as the temperature of the reservoir which supplies heat increases the external irreversibility uh, during the heat addition process at the remember the gas or the air is at a the air is at a lower temperature when we have state 2. So, the external irreversibility during uh, process 2 3 causes the uh, second law efficiency to come down ok. So, you can see that second law efficiency comes down with uh, increasing uh, R c same manner as auto cycle. However, the diesel cycle expresses much less sensitivity to R the second law uh, efficiency of the cycle expresses much uh, or displays much less sensitivity to or when compared to the auto cycle. So, you can see that the cold air standard analysis although it is highly ideal it uh, allows us to get these sorts of uh, insights into the cycle. Most importantly as I mentioned at the beginning of uh, the uh, discussion on air standard cycle, uh, the uh, cold air standard analysis allows us uh, to understand, uh, identify different parameters that control the performance of the cycle or the performance metrics. Not only that, it also allows us to get an idea on how these parameters affect the performance metrics. Okay. So, that is also very important. Although it is an ideal analysis, this uh, variations and insights that uh, we are able to get carry over into the real cycle also. So, and these eff effects may be taken into account when designing the real engine.